Hey, ¿qué tal amigos? Stuart here. Today I want to talk about the Spanish working day and in particular the siesta. Let's go to the intro. <laughs> Now, the siesta and the Spanish working day are topics which have been in the press a lot here recently and also in foreign press. I remember seeing in a couple of the UK papers, in a couple of the papers in the States, they were talking about this topic and how the acting Spanish Prime Minister mentioned a couple of weeks ago that he's thinking of changing the Spanish time zone from CET uh, which it currently is, to Greenwich Mean Time. And he also mentioned that he wants all Spanish companies to force their employees to go home at 6 p.m. instead of 7 or 8 or whatever time they're working till at the moment. And of course, this is a, a controversial topic here in Spain because, I mean, changing the time zone is not easy. But this is what he mentioned. Now, one of the reasons that Spain is on CET, Central European Time, so that means that it's on the same time zone as Germany or France or Italy or the, you know, the Central European countries, rather than Greenwich Mean Time, like Portugal, uh, UK, Ireland, etc. Now, another thing is that Spain has an area uh, called the Canary Islands, and they are on Greenwich Mean Time, but the Spanish mainland is on uh, CET and not GMT, which is strange because Portugal, which obviously shares the Iberian Peninsula with Spain, is on GMT, but Spain's not. Now, this goes back to, I read this on the internet, that uh, this goes back to an agreement that uh, the Spanish... Uh, um, uh, the person in charge of Spain at the time, Franco, uh, wanted to get his wanted to get the country in line with uh, Germany, so they changed the time, and uh, as a result of that, Spain went to CET instead of GMT. Okay, now this is where the debate is happening here at the moment. So Spain is talking about going back to GMT. Now. Working in Spain, uh, what's the timetable? Now, a lot of people think that there's uh, an obligatory siesta in Spain. It's not true. I'll talk about that in a minute. But firstly, I wanted to say that everything here in Spain starts in the morning uh, at the same time as every other country that I've lived in. So I lived in the UK. Uh, people start work at 8 o'clock in the morning or 9 o'clock in the morning. The same happens here in Spain. In Australia, the same. People start work at 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock, exactly the same thing here in Spain. People have breakfast before they go to school uh, or, or work, so in that sense everything is absolutely normal. Everything is normal up until 12 p.m. So as soon as we hit midday, Spain seems to change and goes into a completely different timetable. What I mean by this, for example, is that lunch here in Spain doesn't normally start until 2 p.m or at the very earliest, 1.30. Sometimes even later, uh, 3 o'clock, for example. Another thing, uh, primetime news. Primetime news, there's two primetime newses here in Spain. One is at 3 o'clock for that lunch break, okay? The other one starts at 9 o'clock in the evening. Now, the main news where I come from, Australia, is 6 p.m. And that's also when people have dinner. So it sort of coincides with the dinner time for a lot of people there. So you sit down, you have your dinner, you watch the 6 o'clock news, and uh, then afterwards you watch uh, your favorite series, then you watch a movie at 8 o'clock or 8.30, and then you go to bed at 10. As I said, everything gets pushed back here in the afternoon. So, for example, uh, not only is the... Uh, the main news not starting until nine o'clock but people are not having dinner until nine ten and even eleven o'clock on weekends and perhaps even later so these things get pushed right back the prime time on television for movies and 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 all of the good television shows is not until 10 10 30 they don't finish until 12 o'clock or after 12 o'clock uh, midnight so a lot of people are going to bed very late so that's where spain starts to get a little bit irregular compared to some of the other countries. Now the working day, as I said, normally for the majority of people, at least here in Madrid, now I can't speak for some of the smaller cities, but in the big cities in Spain, people start work at either eight o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning. They work until they have lunch 
and then they come back from lunch and then they either finish at six o'clock if they have a one hour lunch break or they finish at seven o'clock officially if they have a two hour lunch break. Now the two hour lunch break sounds strange but we have to remember that here in Spain lunch is the main meal of the day. When I was a kid or even when I was working in Australia for example lunch was nothing more than a sandwich, maybe you had a pie, maybe you had a sausage roll, something quick. Here in Spain, it's a three course meal. Kids can't take their own lunch to school here in Spain. They have to have a three course meal. They go to a canteen, they all sit down, they have their first course, they have their second course, they have their dessert, and then after they finish uh, eating their lunch, they're able to you know, have a, a bit of a, a play with their friends and, and do those normal things. When I went to school, I got a sandwich, if I was lucky, I got a, maybe a, a fruit juice or chocolate milk or something, and that was it. In 15 or 20 minutes, I was finished and I was out playing. My son here sits down, as I said, three course meal. That's also the same for general lunches. Uh, the two hour lunch break is there because Spanish people, in general, like to have a good lunch. It's as simple as that. There's no sandwich culture here. You can buy a sandwich of course, but normally people are having a three course meal, or what they call here the menu del dia. If you eat outside of your business or if you eat at work, normally there's a canteen sometimes and you can have uh, you know, uh, your choice of a first, the second and obviously your dessert. This is the reason why um, some people do have this two hour lunch break. Now because lunch is the main meal here during the day, some businesses, especially ones that are open to the public, like let's say for example a garage or a dry cleaners, sometimes these businesses will close for two hours in the middle of the day so that people can have lunch. Now, they're not having siestas. Now a lot of people have the idea that everybody in Spain between two and five is having a siesta. That's not the case. Maybe there are some people having a siesta. Maybe you're in a place where it's very hot and uh, you can't go outside in the middle of the day and you do have two hours for lunch. Maybe you can have a siesta. But people that I know don't have siestas during the week. The weekend is another story. Perhaps on a Saturday or a Sunday after you have a big lunch, yes, maybe you have a siesta. I mean, just the, like you would have a nap in uh, any other place in the world. But what there is here in Spain is a long hours culture for a lot of people. And that means that people feel obliged sometimes to work extra hours, normally for free. Because uh, why this exists, I don't know. But it is common that you hear people saying, oh no, I'm supposed to finish at six, but I don't normally leave the office until seven. Or I'm supposed to finish at seven, but normally I don't leave the office until 7.45. Why this happens, I don't really know. I think it's because a lot of the times the bosses exploit the workers perhaps. Uh, bosses call meetings at 6 p.m. that can last for an hour, so people are never able to get out of the office on time. Uh, also, if you happen to work in retail, maybe your business doesn't close until 8 o'clock in the afternoon or in the evening and you and you you know you're not getting home until nine o'clock uh, at night also so that's quite a long day for those people as well so there is that type of um, uh, long hours culture here in Spain but as I said everything after 12 o'clock seems to get pushed back and people really live for the afternoons in this country the afternoons are when everybody comes alive the mornings are very uh, quiet and then the afternoons are always full of activity it's quite common, as I said, on the weekends that you don't see people starting dinner until 10 o'clock in the evening or 10.30. I mean, that is quite common, especially in some of the uh, coastal areas. If you ever visit them, you'll see, uh, you know, uh, foreign people having dinner at 7 p.m. And then the Spanish people won't come and have dinner until 10 p.m. So there is that bit of, uh, bit of a, a difference between the two time zones. Whether the Prime Minister will be able to change the Spanish time zone, I have no idea. I think it probably would be a good idea. Uh, I think it would be a good idea for people to finish work also when they should finish work rather than doing uh, extra hours for no extra pay. Uh, a lot of people say that Spain has low productivity and um, why this is, I have no idea. Maybe some people work less than others. I have no idea why this is. But the people that do work in companies uh, normally are working hard 
and they are doing a few extra hours and they are perhaps being exploited but that's just the way it is. Spain is a country with 23% unemployment I think or over 20% unemployment so people don't feel secure in their jobs. They don't feel secure to turn their computer off a lot of the times at 6 o'clock and go home because they fear losing their jobs basically. So as far as the siesta goes, yeah, it's a concept. It's not obligatory if you come to live in Spain. If you think you're going to come to live in Spain and work and you're going to be having a siesta every day and, 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 and you know, all of these uh, stereotypical things, uh, it's probably not going to be true. I mean, if you want one, you can have one. If you have a two-hour lunch break and you want to have a kip for 15 minutes, I mean, that's up to you. But it's not an obligatory thing to do. So that's all I have to say about the topic. If you have any questions or any comments, just leave them in the section below and I'll see you in the next vlog. Hasta luego.